if you're looking for books that you can read maybe in a weekend or at least like in a week and really dive into and get a lot of the um get a lot of insight from these are ones that i really recommend so i'm going to dive into a few of these for you so first one on the docket is i have is turning pro by stephen pressfield okay one of my favorite books that i've gone to numerous i've probably read this at least five times through now if you know stephen pressfield he was uh famous for some of his fictional work gates of fire which was his uh fictional book about uh, the movie 300, The Battle of Thermopylae, which is awesome. Absolutely love that book. But he got famous uh, and popularized a lot by his book, The War of Art, which is a short book, very similar to this one, where he talked about the creative process, about invoking the muse. And it's a great book. I love The War of Art. But this one, Turning Pro, I actually like a little bit better. Um, I can't tell you exactly why, but it just spoke so directly, so right at you of the difference between an amateur and a pro. And he uses the example of writing, but this could be, you know, used in any different regard of where you're going at. This could be strength, this could be business, this could be, you know, being a parent, whatever it is. Um, he talks about the difference between being an amateur and a pro. And the pro shows up regardless of how they feel every day. They know that success comes from that consistency of showing up and knowing you're going to face the same demons that you did before as an amateur. There's one point of this, it was page 75, when he talks. What's so interesting about this book too is some of them are like maybe two or three paragraphs. They're like, excuse me, half the page is you know written. So you can get through this book super fast. But he talks about in this book of how your mind changes when you turn pro. And he says, each day the professional understands he will wake up facing the same demons, the same resistance, the same self-sabotage, the same tendencies to shadow activities and amateurism that he has always faced. The difference is now he will not yield to those temptations. He will have mastered them and he will continue to master them. So there's a bunch of threads that you can pull on from that. But the number one thing that he says is the things that create resistance on us, they don't ever fully go away. I've talked about this with clients that I have before is what you do is you know how to recognize these things faster and know how to shift and transition. That's why I talk about scouting the defense. The defense is going to always show up on us. It's just a matter of have we seen it before and we can game plan with it a lot faster. But that last line I thought was so powerful. It says he will have mastered them and he will continue to master them, which just shows a beautiful example of that you never are fully complete. That you're, if, when you get into that mastery phase, you're always sharpening the saw. You're always finding new ways to possibly slay the same dragon that you've been dealing with over and over again. And the faster that we recognize this, I think the faster that we can continuously do the things that we need to do on a consistent basis. So that's the first book, absolutely love it. Second one is, you might've read this a long time ago and it's still one of my favorites is, and that's The Giver by Lois Lowry. So. I think the first time I read this was like fifth or sixth grade. Um, it was one of those books that I don't know if it's on the controversial, you know, book list now of anything, but this is a book that I think everybody should read and you should read it every couple of years, I feel. Um, you know, it's the story of Jonas who lives in a utopian community where there is no war, no fear, no pain. It's very much Pleasantville. And then everyone at age 12, they get assigned a role of who they're supposed to be, their job or what they're supposed to do for the community, what they're supposed to do. And Jonas gets picked for a very special training, and that's to learn under the giver. And the giver is one who holds the memories of true pain and true pleasure in life, which sends Jonas down this incredible mental journey that nobody else can really understand because nobody else has seen the things that the giver has shows him so it's in a time where he knows that this society of what's going on is kind of ultimately not right and it's a really challenging journey for him to go through and it's written in a way that is so easy to understand it just cuts out all the fluff and all the bullshit of some of these other things i think uh, some other dystopian type novels are really great but this one really seems like it it grasps it on a level that we all can understand and we can all appreciate and understand so that's my second one in there i would definitely grab this one and this is like a hundred and yeah it's 170 oh i lied it's 177 pages so it's right over the marker but 